I'm here in the glaze lab, and I've just taken two of our primary clays. We've got kaolin in the form of EPK, or Edgar Plastic Kaolin, and I've got bentonite. Again, these are both primary clays. This one, the parent rock, would be a feldspar, and this one, the parent rock, would be some sort of volcanic ash. Now, a big test of how usable a clay is and some of its properties are how much water it takes to add to that powdered material to get it into a plastic state. So this is pretty standard for most clays that you guys might be putting into a clay recipe. I've added, um, for 300 grams of dry material, I added 100 milliliters of water. And this is maybe a little on the sticky side, but this is pliable. And that's the kaolin. For the bentonite, this is a whole nother story. I added to that first 300 grams of dry material, I added 100 milliliters of water, and it was still very dry and crumbly. So I kept adding and kept adding. I had to add <coughs> 500 milliliters of water to get it to this state and as I touch this it is just like it is slimy it is gooey it is strange <clears throat> how this material is used more frequently this is actually the residue that was left in my put this over here This is the residue that was left in the, the mixing bowl. Um, and you can see that just by putting a little bit of water in there to clean out the bowl, I left it and, and came back to it and it has started to swell and turn into these gelatinous boogers. So this material is its, it's primary um, drawback, but also in this case, it could be a benefit, is that it swells. It absorbs lots of moisture and in doing so, it can, um, if added to a recipe, it can lend a, a level of plasticity. So we know that kaolin is a fairly non-plastic clay because it's got large toothy particles that are not rounded out and smoothed and fit together nicely. We could add some bloated bentonite to a porcelain recipe to make it a little bit more plastic, a little bit more functional. Um, so these two things which might have drawbacks, we could mitigate by combining the two of them, albeit with a very small percentage of bentonite to a much larger percentage of kaolin. Now I've taken that same mixture and I've rolled or tried to roll out each of those materials into a slab. That's gonna give me some sense of how workable that material is. Now for the EPK or Edgar Plastic Kaolin, that rolled out into a slab like normal clay. For the bentonite, it was so weird, nothing I could do, could, I could not roll it into a normal slab. I formed it into a loaf and then sliced it with a wire tool to get these, these slabs. And of course it sticks to like literally everything. It, it's very like, has a greasy kind of quality. But what I've done with these slabs is I have essentially made test tiles to test shrinkage from this moist hydration point. So in this case, 30% hydration. And in the case of the bentonite, 160% hydration. I've rolled out slabs and I have marked off a 10 centimeter mark, just kind of arbitrarily chose 10 centimeters. Um, and what will happen is once these are bone dry, I'll go back and remeasure that and I can calculate how much shrinkage this material has in this particular form. Um, test set up and you have some leftover material this is where you might wanna do a more informal kind of plasticity test, see what this is good for. And the two basic things that I would do would be to roll a coil and see if that coil bends. If you can get that to bend without cracking, 
That means that you have a good hydration and that this clay is plastic enough that you could use it for something. A next thing would be to, very simply, make a small pinch pot. And this is actually the test that I like to do out in the field if I'm trying to determine if something that I've found in a riverbed or a bank is a plastic clay. If you can make a pinch pot out of that, there's some clay content. If that was just dirt <clears throat> or silt, you would not be able to do either of these two things. Now let's try and do that with the bentonite. Oh, I can actually roll a coil, but it will not bend without breaking. Now that is not like an indication that this is <laughs> not plastic. It's just such a weird material that you can't really form it um, how you would normal clay. Let me try and make a pinch pot. And it is kind of working. Um, I would describe this as like a really thick type of Vaseline or petroleum jelly. It's kind of like waxy, greasy, and very sticky. So at least I'm able to make a kind of garbage looking pinch pot. Um, but I can't, <laughs> see, I can't roll this into a coil that will bend without cracking. So it's going to indicate something about this kind of weird ass material. I will come back to these things when they are dry and update you guys. It's now been six days since I made these test tiles, and you can see the kaolin has started to warp as it shrank, but otherwise it is bone dry. I actually broke that coil that I made. The pinch pot has remained intact, and it's bone dry. And that bone dry clay is, you know, kind of brittle and fragile. but. This is otherwise, outside of the curling, which I could have mitigated by flipping these halfway through, this is pretty normal. And the shrinkage rate can be calculated by <laughs> some weird glare. But looks like it has shrunk from 10 centimeters down to eight and a half. Now let's look at the bentonite. <laughs> so this is pretty funky. You can see that it has cracked like crazy. It is still not completely dry. You can see from the color shift that the center part is still pretty dark and the outer part is drier, which means that it still has more shrinking to do. Let's see can even count this. This has shrunk down to seven and a half. So right now it doesn't seem like that, that shrinkage is too far off from the kaolin, but it is not even done shrinking and it's already cracked in horrible ways. It's, it's really kind of gone crazy. If we look over to the, the coil that I tried to make, it just like broke apart. And really weird is the pinch pot that I made. It just split apart. It did not hold its shape. Um, it seems to be bone dry right now, but it's kind of, um, you can see why this would not be a usable clay because of that splitting and cracking. Um, and because it, it, it does have the super high hydration point, you know, it has to do all of this shrinkage. It means it, it does that really slowly and I still have some of that material that I mixed up six days ago and completely uncovered, some of this is still like moldable. So you can imagine if you're trying to work with a clay that is going to dry out in a timely manner for your process, 
this stuff is going to be problematic. So, we have a primary clay made from volcanic rock as the parent rock, and a primary clay where a feldspar was likely the parent rock. Both of them being primary clays, but with very different properties. This one would be really useful as like the main ingredient in a clay body or a clay recipe. And this one really only useful as a small addition to lend plasticity, or if you wanna help keep things floating in suspension. So that might be adding that in very small amounts to a glaze or a slip, or <laughs> even your frosty dairy dessert or uh, when, uh, you know, McDonald's milkshake. So I'll probably take a picture of this after I fire these, but it'll probably just be garbage.